Hello. Today we're going to try to answer to this important question that is how many years of healthy life can you gain with a healthier lifestyle? So I put together a number of scientific evidence that I think, you know, they are reasonable and I think, you know, they can in some way answer to this important question. So the first study is this epidemiological study that has just been published in JAMA Internal Medicine. And uh, in this large um, study, uh, the authors found that men and women with a BMI less than 25, so not non-overweight or obese, and uh, who are physically active, non-smoking, non-drinking, uh, or drinking alcohol in moderation, they live almost 10 years longer, 9.9 .9 for men and 9.4 for women, than people with uh, these, with unhealthy, with these unhealthy four factors. Let me show you better. So basically, here they created a healthy life score, li lifestyle score from zero to eight, with eight the healthiest, based on again these four uh, uh, risk factors or healthy lifestyle factors that have been scored based on zero one and two so what you can see here is that women or not men who um, starting from age 40 that 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 have zero healthy lifestyle factors live on average 21.7 years those with the healthiest live 30.9 so basically uh, almost 10 years longer and similar for women 21.6 to 30.7 uh, 9.4 years longer um, so this is these are of course you know our our it suggests basically that you know men and women they can reach the healthiest you know basically 71 years without developing any of these uh, common chronic disease and in this study is type 2 diabetes coronary heart disease stroke cancer asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease okay the next study that i've selected is the study published in bmj in 2020 by uh, Frank Hu and uh, Walter Willett and uh, colleagues from Harvard uh, School of Public Health. In this study, uh, they, um, they basically stratified uh, uh, men and women from the nurse study and the professional study into uh, uh, with a, with a healthy lifestyle score again uh, with uh, people having none one two three or four or five of healthy um, uh, lifestyle factors and as you can see here as the number of healthy lifestyle factor increase in both men and women there is an increase in life expectancy free of cardiovascular disease cancer and type 2 diabetes at age 50. So there was a gain again of almost 10 years, 23.7 to 34.4 years, going from here to here in women, and 23, from 23.5 to 31.1 on average for men from here to here. So from zero healthy lifestyle factors to four or five. If we look at the single the specific uh, uh, lifestyle factors composing the score as you can see here this is a healthy diet the healthier the diet in in both women and men the longer you know the, the higher the life expectancy at age 50 without the three chronic diseases vice versa the higher the number of cigarettes smoked the lower the life expectancy for physical activity in both men and women. As you can see here, there is a, a linear increase in uh, life expectancy free of 
three chronic diseases. For, small, for, for alcohol intake, it's less clear, especially in women, doesn't look, you know, there is a major difference. But for BMI, again, the men and women with a BMI between 18.5 and 25 are those with a higher life expectancy free of chronic diseases. This is perfectly in line with another study, you know, you know that you know we published in, you know, I was a co-author of this paper that you know we published on BMJ in 2016 with Frank Hu, uh, and um, again, you know, in this study we stratified uh, the men and women from the nurse cell study and the uh, professional study in uh, in four categories as you can see here but also stratified the same people by healthy lifestyle factors similar to the previous study with zero are those who are sedentary eating an healthy diet smoking and over drinking alcohol and three or four are individuals who are not smoking, exercising five days a week, eating healthier diets, meaning more whole grains and beans and vegetables, fruits, seeds, nuts and fish, and uh, much less junk food and, uh, and uh, animal products. And uh, again, what you can see here is that People who were lean, so especially those with 18.5 to 22.5, because of healthy lifestyle, had the higher, uh, the lower risk of mortality. It's 60%, 61% lower than the reference group on the unhealthy lifestyle score. And what is interesting that, you know, in the people who are unhealthy, who have, who have a number of unhealthy, or have zero healthy lifestyle factors, the people with the BMI between 18.5 and 22.5, they have the same mortality risk than the obese individuals. And that's very important because it means basically that, and, and even in this study, uh, the great majority of people that had a BMI less than 25, they were basically people in these categories. So people with that were not exercising, eating healthier, no smoking. And, and that's why, you know, they, they, a lot of people in, in the Western society who are lean, they have a higher mortality because they have an accumulation. If they're lean, it's because they're losing weight because of the accumulation of molecular metabolic damage that you know is leading to catabolic responses and uh, and eventually to chronic diseases. The the other good news of this study is that even in obese individuals, those with a, a higher number of healthy lifestyle factors, they have a lower mortality. Uh, and so basically even in obese individuals, you know, uh, adopting healthy lifestyle factor reduces the risk of mortality, cardiovascular and cancer mortality, and not only all cause mortality. The third study that I've selected is the study published in circulation. Is, uh, this is uh, data from the Framingham Heart Study. And uh, here, instead of having uh, dietary, exercise, smoking, and um, alcohol intake, we have real measurement of uh, cardiometabolic risk factors. So in this study, what we see is that people that at age 50, men and women at age 50, had a total cholesterol less than 180 without drugs a blood pressure lower than 120 over 80 without drugs. They were non-smokers, non-diabetic, and, and had a BMI of less than 20, 25. They had a risk of having a myocardial infarction of 5 to 5.2%. In contrast, men and women that at age 50, they had a cholesterol higher than 240 
or they were taking statins, or they had a blood pressure higher than 160 over 100, or they were uh, taking antihypertensive anti medication, they were smokers or diabetic, or had a BMI higher than 25, they were overweight or, ob or obese. If they had two or more of these um, cardiometabolic risk factors, their risk of developing a myocardial infarction in the remaining part of their life after 50 was 70%. From 5%, 5 out of 100 having a myocardial infarction to 70, 7 out of 10 having a myocardial infarction. And the median survival in line with the previous studies is 11 years longer. As you can see here in the in, the, in those with two or more abnormal risk factor, the median survival is 28 years. So basically meaning that on average they live up to 78 years. Those with optimal cardiometabolic risk factors, they lived 39 years or more. So basically they live more than 90 years. This is fantastic. And what is what is also important in this study that do you know how many people in this Framingham heart study they had a optimal risk factors at age 50 less than four percent 96 percent of people living in America in Framingham in particular at age 50 had abnormal risk factor one or more abnormal risk factors so the question is, the next question is, is it possible to have, to achieve this optimal cardiometabolic risk factor with a lifestyle? It's just, again, luck and genetics. And the answer is yes. There are several studies. I'm gonna show you a couple where basically this, uh, these are the results of the calorie multi-center randomized clinical trial where we randomized men and women with the age between 20 and 50, BMI 22 to 28, to two years of 25% color restriction. In reality, we achieve a mild 13% color restriction. So you don't need you know, to drastically reduce your calories. We obtain a 70% reduction in body fat. You know, uh, well, 70% of the reduction in body weight was a reduction in body fat. And fantastically amazingly you know all the cardiometabolic risk factors were improved at super physiological level similar to those you know that we saw in the framingham heart study so there was a significant reduction in ldl cholesterol total cholesterol a significant increase in hdl cholesterol the good cholesterol there was a significant reduction in systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure there was a significant improvement in insulin sensitivity there was a significant reduction in the metabolic syndrome score, significant reduction in triglycerides. As you can see here, you know, the area and the curve for insulin was significantly reduced. There was a significant improve, improvement in insulin response, in insulin sensitivity, meaning less compensatory hyperinsulinemia. And hyperinsulinemia is stimulating cancer and aging, as I've discussed previously uh, in other lectures. And we also in this population saw a significant reduction, as you can see here, in F2 isoprostens, urinary F2 isoprostens, that is the gold standard to measure oxidative stress in humans. So less oxidation just with a mild 13% color restriction. And strikingly, we saw a significant major reduction in C-reactive protein, TNF-alpha, total leukocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. So less inflammation, less immune activation. And as we know, inflammation is a major driver of many chronic diseases, including cancer, dementia, cardiovascular disease, and other inflammatory diseases, and you know, is also implicated in the biology of aging. So striking results. Not only that, not only the cardiometabolic risk factor were improved, you know, but we have shown in other studies that, you know, a, that color restriction with optimal nutrition can improve the function of the heart. You know, with echocardio, as you can see here, we measured 
the diastolic function, the left ventricular diastolic function, we know that, that as we age, you know, our ventricle becomes stiffer, less efficient, you know, to dilate and pump blood. And in this paper we have published in Journal of American College of Cardiology, we have shown, you know, many, as you can see here, of the uh, echo marker of diastolic function were significantly improved, and we have replicated this in randomized clinical trial. Uh, so there is a less fibrosis, more elasticity and compliance, and uh, better heart function. These data are supported by another set of data where, you know, we found that in humans that were eating less calories with a healthier diet, there was an increase in heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is a biomarker of cardiac health, but general health also. Indeed, the heart variability is the variability between one uh, uh, heartbeat and the other, as you can see here, the more the variability between two um, uh, the QRS complex, the healthier is the system because this represents the balance between the sympathetic, catecholaminergic, and parasympathetic autonomic nervous system that is regulating heart rate, blood pressure, uh, and many other uh, visual functions. So basically, it's the balance, you know, between uh, the, when you when you hear, you know, like a dog barking, and you 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 know, before you 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 realize the danger, your 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 autonomic nervous system is already activated, and your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up because you are ready to 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 flee. And, um, and so we know, you know, as uh, we age, there is a worsening of the heart rate variability. So basically, the heart rate variability the, becomes less variable. And, uh, and that's very consistent. You know, there are lots of data showing that is a linear decline in heart rate variability because the parasympathetic nervous system becomes weaker and the sympathetic system becomes stronger the tone of these two in the balance. And there are a number of biomarkers. And in this paper we published in Aging Cell with Philly Stein, we found that, you know, that people on calorie restriction, they are 20, 25 years younger in terms of uh, heart, rate, heart rate variability parameters than age and sex matched controls. Again, supporting a younger physiologic, physiologically younger cardiovascular system, and not only cardiovascular system, because as I said, the autonomic nervous system is regulating multiple important functions. Just to end up, what I want to say is that, you know, I think that the knowledge we are accumulating is suggesting that, you know, we can now in a most, in a more specific uh, way, tailor a number of important aging pathways. So we have shown that uh, there are numbers of molecular pathways that can be modulated to increase lifespan and health span. So there are a number of genetic and dietary and pharmacological uh, intervention, then it can extend, substantially extend lifespan and slowing down the accumulation of molecular damage. The most important is the insulin agiophanum pathway, but then there is the MIC, the NPK, the FGF21, the HG factor 1, the angiotensin 2, the NFKB, the AC5, that is the catecholaminergic pathway. And so all these pathways can be manipulated by healthy lifestyle factor. So now, instead of, you know, having this kind of broad definition, you have to exercise half an hour a day, you have to eat healthier, you know, more fruits and vegetables. Now with the knowledge we have, you know, we can selectively and specifically and individually uh, modulate these important pro-aging or pro-longevity pathway, depending how you modulate them, you know, to extend lifespan well beyond 10 years that, you know, the other papers have shown. 
and uh, and again you know there are now a number of interventions you know that you know i've described in this review article on cell and other papers you know that show how nutritional modulation different type of nutritional modulation from calorie protein amino acid restriction or optimization with uh, microbiota derived metabolites and uh, other factors plus different type of exercise acting on different metabolic molecular pathways that you know extend lifespan and health span beyond what has been shown in those papers and we know that's possible because data like this one from Mazzoro my, my, my dear friend Edward Mazzoro uh, show that you know see our animals calories with animals not only they live much longer than the uh, ad libitum fat mice, but 30% of them, they, are, they die when they are very old without any pathological lesion. So they died of old age. Similarly, um, Ikino and, um, and uh, has, has found that, uh, that basically uh, the growth hormone receptor knockout mice that are the one of the most powerful genetic animal model of longevity they live much longer and approximately half of them they die without any gross pathological lesion again suggesting that you know aging and disease they are not inevitably linked and you know we can get older without developing diseases without taking drugs without taking uh, having surgery and without suffering and um, and this is also not only possible in animal in animal mammals but also in, in 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 small mammals but also in humans because we know that you know 20 percent of centenarians they are escapers meaning they don't develop any disease before 100 years of age so these data are all very encouraging and suggesting that you know this new approach that is not based on eat five servings of fruits and vegetables more whole grains less legume more meat or the keto and these and that but this is really based on the understanding on the metabolic molecular physiological part parameters that are regulating aging now can be tweaked they can be manipulated in in, in on an individual base you know to maximize health and drastically reduce the risk of developing chronic diseases and of course you know there are many other factors you know the interaction between genes and dietary and physical exercise but we know you know that cognitive training and sleep and meditation mindfulness by reducing stress by reducing the ac5 activation the cortisol you know can also modulate this aging pathways you know pollution a body of pollution and other factors you know all together can optimize this balance and improve health span and lifespan beyond you know what you know we think is possible so let me conclude this is my last slide by saying that you know you shouldn't believe you shouldn't be put off but by all those people who claim that you know disease are inevitable and that are due to bad genes or bad luck yes bad luck exists bad genes is, exist but you know what we know from many studies especially on uh, pay on on, on uh, twins identical twins is that you know no more than 20 percent of the probability of living a healthier or, or shorter uh, longer or shorter life are due to inherited genes from our parents and many of the common cancers <laughs> More, no more than 20 20 25 percent is due to 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 to, to uh, inherited genes 80 percent is due to environmental factors and some of these pathways that i show you before are part of this fantastic this amazing jigsaw puzzle and so the idea you know that you know if we can combine all this piece of the puzzle all together we can basically improve drastically improve and maximize metabolic health and improve also through other techniques emotional 
intellectuals and spiritual health into a single entity that is to me the development of a free happy creative and compassionate human being thank you for your attention